Well, of course, as human rights defenders, we're not calling for specific political changes. We're calling for things that go in line with human rights. And so one of the things that we're calling for uh, is that human rights violations stop. Now, realistically speaking, uh, and I'm not saying that, it, that we're going to make sure it doesn't happen. I'm saying that realistically speaking, if the human rights violations are still ongoing on the ground, any political discussion right now will probably not have much of an effect because of the human rights violations. Whether they want to do it anyway or not, that's their choice. It's not something that we get involved in. But to guarantee the best outcome of any political discussion, you need to stop the human rights violations on the ground first. You can't have the people that you're supposed to have this dialogue with sitting behind bars um, and saying, well, well, now we're going to have a dialogue with other people and we're not going to include those. Because again, the outcome is not going to be very effective. Um, as human rights defenders, like I said, we don't call for a specific political system. For us, the concern isn't whether it's a constitutional monarchy or a democracy or a republic. What we care about is a government that, rep uh, that uh, represents the people that you know, respects human rights, civil liberties, and political rights. Now, one thing that I would say is that as a human rights defender, I believe that the king and the prime minister and the crown prince of Bahrain should be put on trial albeit a fair and independent trial by international standards. And if the Bahraini judicial courts cannot provide that, then it should be the ICC. But they need to be put on trial. And if found guilty of crimes that have been committed over the past year and a half, then they need to serve time behind bars. When you're looking at a situation of an absolute monarchy, the, some of these changes, especially when you're looking at the situation on the ground which, in which we're witnessing almost daily human rights abuses, these changes are considered superficial. What have they actually done to influence the human rights situation on the ground? If we're still looking at things like extrajudicial killings, arbitrary arrests, uh, massive use of excessive force, um, children in prison, kidnappings, a systematic torture, why would it matter to the public or to human rights defenders if they made a few changes to some legislative law? Now, the situation is, is that it's good for them to make these positive changes, but it's not enough. What needs to happen now, and for us as human rights defenders, our main concern are the human rights violations on the ground. Whether they change a certain law in the parliament is not our main concern. So while we say that, yes, it's a good step for them to make those changes, but what we need to see is a stopping to the human rights violations that are happening every day. So there's several issues. First of all, Zainab's last arrest on the 2nd of August. Um, the charge that she's being held on is ripping a picture of the king. It's not what you just mentioned, right? Um, during her trial, her lawyer tried to use an excerpt from the BICI report, which I think is a very interesting um, example that shows where the Bahrain regime is today. And the, the judge told the lawyer that the BICI report is a part of the past, and now we're looking towards the future, which basically means they're not, they don't consider the BICI report to be a relevant document anymore. So that's the, the charge that Zainab is actually being held on. Now, if you look at every single video that there is of Zainab al Khawaja, Right? There's one video where she's sitting in a roundabout. That's not obstructing traffic. That's not obstructing. She's not even defying the law of gathering, which says no more than five people in one place. Right? She's by herself. She gets dragged, beaten, punched, slapped, and then handcuffed from one side of the handcuff, and then dragged from the other side, and then put in a car. This time, when she was arrested, she had her entire leg. Uh, with support because she was shot at close range not too long ago and it's going to take her around the years for it to heal and she walks on crutches she was dragged down the stairs in that state um, now when we're talking about these charges let's say even if she was there are videos of her standing in the middle of the streets now she's standing on the lines in the middle of the streets which means she's not actually stopping the traffic in the video you see the traffic going forward the one video where the traffic is not moving is because the riot police came with their jeeps and they blocked off the road where she's standing so that cars couldn't pass by. And that's why the traffic was not moving. Um, but again, when we're talking about a situation where the Bahraini regime refuses to allow people the right to protest, they need to expect that these things will happen. People will go out to the streets and protest anyway. 
Them saying you need to go sit at home while we comment all these human rights violations and you shouldn't respond, of course that's not how it works. People will re refuse to abide by that, they will continue to go out. 